Iran's foreign ministry spokesman denied his country's involvement in an assassination plan targeting Donald Trump. The U.S. Justice Department on Friday disclosed an Iranian murder-for-hire plot to kill Trump, charging a man who said he had been tasked by a government official before this week's election with planning the assassination of the Republican president-elect. Investigators were told of the plan to kill Trump by Farhad Shakari, an accused Iranian government asset who spent time in American prisons for robbery and who authorities say maintains a network of criminal associates enlisted by Tehran for surveillance and murder-for-hire plots. We have openly rejected any involvement in such matters and consider the accusations completely baseless," said Esmail Baghiai during a regular briefing. Baghiai said the accusation was another mine planted under the already complex relations between Iran and the US. The region and the Muslim world and all countries are closely watching the current and next US government's behavior and the international community wants an end to genocide crimes and aggression in Palestine and Lebanon and escalation in West Asia, Shakeri also said during the briefing. Ham az lahaz zamani va ham az lahaz mawzu'i طرح این ادعا این اتهام کاملا مشکوک و به نظر من شرورانه است چیزی که من ازش اسم بردم عرض کردم نوعی مینگذاری در یا یکی دیگر از مینهایی است که در روابط بسیار پیچیده ایران و آمریکا میشه ازش تلقی کرد ما صراحتا هر گونه دخالت در چنین مواردی رو رد کردیم کاملا بی اساس می دونیم اون خبری که ما داریم این هست که یک تبعی ایرانی ما از اخبار دیدیم که یک تبعی ایرانی دستگیر شده تبعی ایرانی بوده این که باز ارز می کنم تابعیت جای دیگری داشته باشه دست کم بنده اطلاعی ندارم ما با نهادهای زیرب در ارتباط هستیم برای اینکه ببینیم که وضعیت به چه شکل بوده امیدواریم که در فرصت باقی مانده دولت آمریکا ممانعت بکنه از تشدید جنگ افروزی و ادامه جنایات در قزه و لبنان و البته نکته دیگه ای که مهم هست این هست که دولت مردان آتی آمریکا از این وضعیت درس بگیرند و پایبند باشند به اون ادعاها یا وعده هایی که در جهان کارزار انتخاباتی دادند مهم این است که منطقه جهان اسلام همه کشورهای جهان با دقت رفتار و عملکرد دولت آمریکا چه دولت قبل و چه دولت آتی رو رصد میکنن و اون چیزی که انتظار جامعه بین المللی هست این هست که از ادامه نسل کشی و جنایت و تجاوز در فلسطین و لبنان و تشدید ناامنی در منطقه غرب آسیا جلوگیری بشه. ما از ابتدا اعلام کردیم بخشی از منازعه اوکراین نیستیم. اصرار داریم بر این که گفتگو که اختلافات از طریق صلحامیز و گفتگو حل بشه کماکان پایبند هستیم به این دیدگاه و متاسفیم واقعا که بعضی از مقام های اوکراین بر ادعاهای ضد ایرانی خودشون اصرار میبرزن Ukrainian inventors have created the FPV drone Kizak Reboff Its special feature is a fiber optic connection with the operator, which is invulnerable to enemy electronic warfare systems. Forbes reported on the development. Kizak Reboff is an attack drone. Instead of radio communications, which can be suppressed by jammers, it is equipped with a spool of optical fiber, and this is probably the most effective protection of UAVs from electronic warfare systems to date. The Russian occupation forces were the first to use this technology on the battlefield. 
The Russians are passing off this development as their own, but it turns out that it is a renamed Chinese UAV model, which the Russian army buys from its suppliers with a 750% markup. Nevertheless, the fiber optic drone turned out to be very effective. Ukrainian developers immediately began creating their own version of such a drone. This is how the Rebov Hizak appeared. This is the first model in Ukraine, but certainly not the last. The drone was built by 3D Tech LLV, a company founded by war veteran Alexei Zulinsky. In the summer of 2022, the car he was riding in was blown up by a mine. Unfortunately, two of his fellow soldiers died and he himself was seriously injured and was unable to return to military service. Now, Zulinsky helps the defense forces by creating UAVs, 3D Tech is constantly improving its drones based on military feedback. Every month, new methods and technologies appear and we need to keep up with them. We are actively searching, testing and implementing new technologies since modern warfare is developing very quickly. The head of the company said, one of the biggest problems for the free use of UAVs on the front line is jammers. A large number of them have flooded the line of combat contact, which is why a no-fly zone has been established there. Many enemy targets have become unreachable for the defense forces. And today, the only connection that cannot be affected by enemy electronic warfare is optical fiber. In essence, this is a cable that connects the UAV and its ground station. Today, the company has working versions of UAVs with coils up to 10 kilometers long. Another feature of such a drone is the ability to fly at extremely low altitudes, even at knee length. The enemy often expects the drone to attack from above, so it usually watches the sky. However, fiber optic controlled drones can approach targets while out of sight of the enemy, flying at low altitude, which increases their effectiveness and adds an element of surprise. Zulinski said, a drone on fiber optics is also a very stable connection that does not break even in buildings. Despite the fact that the UAV flies with a tether, the developers were able to achieve its high maneuverability. It is able to hover in one place, circle above the target, turn around, doing all this at high speeds. This opens up the possibility of using UAVs in urban or underground combat. They can be launched ahead of or even in place of infantry, checking buildings and hitting targets while their operators remain at a safe distance. The article says,